here in Columbus, Ohio. Riley is on your left. Adam is on your right. It's Counters Company. It's Monogreen Tron. Winner of this match locking up a top eight bid. We have Adam on four cards. That is not a lot of those, as Riley is going to begin things with a Birds of Paradise off of a Razor Verge Thicket. For Adam, it's a Power Plant, it's a Chromatic Star, and we're going to head back over to Riley. Riley has another Razor Verge Thicket, and now he's got a Kitchen Fink, so he's going to get a little bit aggressive here at the early stages of the game. Gain a little bit of life as well as he moves on up to 22. Now, I'm only going to 4, not ideal, of course, when you're playing any deck in Magic. However, Tron is one of the decks that... You know, a mulligan of four is not the end of the world because you just got to get to seven mana first. Right. I, I think uh, of all the decks in modern, um, the, Tron is going to be the be biggest beneficiary by far of the new L London mulligan system. Mm -hmm. um, your best four or five card hands are still extremely good. If you have Tron plus one payoff, that's going to be good enough to get it done. And by getting so many looks at seven cards, even if you had to throw some of them back, you have a really good opportunity to start off... Uh, a lot more games with a turn through Tron. Franz is going to play an Urza's Mind now to go along with his power plant, play a Relic of Progenitus, and pass the turn back. So one thing that Franz doesn't have is the Tower of Power right now, but he does have a Walking Ballista in hand, and Ballista against this kind of deck is actually pretty darn good. So we're going to watch Riley play a Vizier and a Giver of Ruins. So if you're Adam Franz, if you peel the Tower of Power, you've got some work to do with the Ballista. But it does not look like he has the Tower of Power right now. That is a power plant. This is a Ballista on one with Relic at the ready, and he's going to use the Ballista to take care of the Vizier. So we're going to head back over to Riley here in just a moment as Adam does activate the Relic of Progenitus. I think I would have preferred to see it on the bird there. It's just so much more likely that Karan leaves with um, his a Devoted Druid if he already has the combo rolled off. Mm -hmm. He missed a land drop, so it's very likely he's just tight on mana. Um, you know, uh, if you think that you... If you can keep Korean off the combo early that y you have the opportunity to win the game pretty easily, I could see taking care of the Vizier, but it's not really taking that sort of shape. And I would rather just try to pin the mana a little bit. Well, Franz is going to blow up the Relic to draw a card. Now we know what Tron is capable of. He could draw a tower into an Ugin. He could draw a tower into an Oblivion Stone. Who knows what he'll find? Just a basic forest and a Sylvan Scrying means that he's going to complete the Tron right now. But Riley, I don't think, has him dead this turn. So that means that Adam should probably get another turn to maybe get a little bit lucky here. We'll head back over to Riley now, who's got that Vizier of Remedies, a Giver of Runes, a Kitchen Finks, a Noble Hierarch of Birds of Paradise. And he's going to be getting some beatdowns, so Adam's going to fall down to eight. Riley's draw has not been that explosive. He's given Adam a lot of time there, partner. Yep. I mean, tur turn five is about as slow as it's going to get. I don't even know, though, if... Uh, Francais has a payoff card here. It looks like he's just got another scrying. Oh, he's got no payoff card right now. Yep. But we know how Tron likes to Tron. All right, well, here we go. Next turn, it's lethal. Thinking, I'm thinking an Ugin sandwich. Okay, well, I like a good redraw. Yeah, I love the, 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 the Tron redraw. It's yeah. very fun. I'm here for the sweat. Access to 10 mana this turn for Adam. He'll start with the sphere. He'll crack the sphere. He'll have a green and a color. He'll have a green floating. That's it. We come for the sweat. He's here for the sweat. I like it. I like it. Make yourself work for it. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh talk to me. Big redraw. Talk to me. He's got access to eight mana. Is an Ugin home? Any Oogie Oogies? Oogie Boogie Boogies? I see a Karn. <laughs> Well, the question here is if Karn's even good enough because, you know, uh, Karan's going pretty wide here. Plus, he's got a Ballista for he's a also, little... He's also got a Giver of Runes, Yeah, to too, cover. So yeah. Karn doesn't strike me as good enough, and I don't think Adam would be one to slow roll. If he had an Ugin, I think he'd take it. And if he had no stone, I think he'd take that, too. And I just don't think Karn's going to be good enough unless a mistake is made here by Riley or unless we're missing something at this stage. So Karn is the selection. Here is the Planeswalker. And this is going to plus 
on Eternal Witness. Maybe getting some information out the door here is Adam Franzi. As this strikes me as simplistic enough here for Riley, he will sacrifice a couple of fetch lands. I think this might be so that he can put a counter on his Ballista, perhaps. Not mm -hmm. entirely sure. Getting a Godless Shrine untapped. And an Overgrown Tomb untapped. There we go. So up to three. Okay, I'm like, what am I missing? No, nothing. I don't think I'm missing something. Is he attacking Karn for some reason I don't understand? He is not. Riley Karan's going to win game number one here over Adam Franzi. Counters company up a game very quickly over Mono Green Tron. Though Franzi on a mulligan to four had the ability to top deck an Ugin or an Oblivion Stone, Oblivion Stone yeah. to actually just get back in and maybe even just flat win that game. For sure. Yeah. Which is pretty wild to think about. So we take a look at the sideboards and we will start with Adam, who's got three Atrus Claims, two Thrag Tusk, and a bunch of one-ofs here because he even plays Karn the Great Creator. It's a Sorcerer Spyglass, a Walking Ballista, a Grafdigger's Cage, a Liquid Metal Coating, Crucible of Worlds, Mycosynth Lattice, a Chalice of the Void, an Oblivion Stone, and a Snaring Bridge, and a Tormod's Crypt. What do we like here? Same 60. Not in a Thrag Tusk, not an Atrus Claim. The rest of this is bullet, bullets for Karn. You want to bring any of those bullets in? No. <laughs> I don't. I actually think I want to bring the Oblivion Stone in. I don't want to have to rely on Karn to have to search for it. I think well, that's that too it, slow. It just depends on, you know, do you think that the, the Karn is there um, a, as a way to find bullets over slow games, or do you think you can kind of naturally get it to it fast enough? Uh, I agree if you think the Karn is too slow. But it's not like Koreansek is the fastest in the world, you know what I mean? I don't know. I, I don't know if I want Karn in after sideboard for a matchup like this. Just strikes but me But what would you even... I mean, he's got four to cut, right? So what do you want to bring in? You want to bring in the Oblivion Stone? Give me the O-Stone. Give me the Ballista. Ballista. Give me the Sorcerer Spyglass. And give me the Chalice. Okay. Done. Done, done, done. Ride the Koran. He's got three paths, two Tireless Trackers, two Sin Collectors, two Assassin's Trophy. He's got one of them well because he's playing Court of Calling in his deck. Plague Engineer, Hex Drinker, Knight of Autumn, Campbell, Council of Allocation, Brup Decay, and Burrington Forge Tenda. Um, I like the paths and the Assassin's Trophies well enough. Uh, I could be talking to the Tireless Tracker if he had more ways to disrupt Bronze's mana, but he doesn't really have very much of that. I could see you bringing in the Hex Drinker just to try to be a little bit faster to the battlefield, but pretty light sideboarding here as well. Well, those are your options there for both players. Game number two is going to be underway here in just a moment. Adam Franzi will be on the play. He's going to try to keep more than four cards this time around. While they get to work on Shuffle and X, we are going to talk very quickly about our Carnox chairs that those players are sitting in, and we are too. Carnox has got your back, and you can save 10% at checkout when you visit Carnox.com slash SCG on any of their chairs. Just use that link if you want to get a cool chair like the one that we're sitting in here because they've got your back, and so do we. Carnox.com slash SCG. You still cozy in this bad boy? Because I, I am. am. I'm rocking and rolling right now. They can't see me, mm -hmm. but I'm rocking and rolling. You're gonna bring it all the way down, aren't you? I got yeah. well. I gotta find a way to release the the tension. Well, my chair is a little bit more stiff than yours right now. Mm -hmm. Looks like Riley is going to take a mulligan, while Adam is going to keep his seven, which is much more than four, as I'm sure all you wonderful folks watching at home are aware. Again, winner of this match is going to make our top eight. So this is a win and in here in Columbus in round number 14. Todd Anderson, Ryan Overturf, they'll be bringing you round number 15. They're also bringing your quarterfinals, which you get the opportunity to vote on if you join our feature match area on Twitch. You'll get access to custom emoticons and badges. Have fun chatting, but be responsible, please, and thank you. And you'll get to vote on our quarterfinals when we put that up during our break after round number 15. Looks like Riley's happy enough with his six, and we are underway here in game number two. It's an Urza's Tower and Expedition map. That's more like it for our Tron playoff. Riley Coran, see how he wants to start this game off. Does he have a Mana Accelerant to get things going? 
I'm going to play a Horizon Canopy and a Giver of Ruins. Another new Modern Horizons card is the Giver. That's Nurse's Power Plant. Franti has the ability to complete the Tron on turn three, as this deck does oh so well. That is a Devoted Druid that is being protected by the Giver of Ruins. So we could see turn three infinite mana very easily here for Riley Coran. Could even be a turn three kill here, folks. Yeah, this opening into a Vizier with a payoff card is... Infinite mana into a kill. And you can always kill the Giver of Runes, but that's not going to be good enough to break up the combo if that's the only thing you can do. Giver of Runes is that one mana, one, two, core cleric. Another target creature you control gains protection from colorless or from the color of your choice of the loaded turn. So that means if a Karn were to show up, the seven mana one, of course, wouldn't be good enough. No. We've got a four mana Karn instead. Franzi wants to check his sideboard, and it looks like he might be going to Sorcerer Spyglass, which is a convenient way to get the job done here. So he'll roll that down to three. He'll get the Spyglass out of the board, and he looks like he's going to deploy that bad boy. So Sorcerer Spyglass will allow him to look at Riley's hand and then name a card and stop its activated abilities from being played, which it won't surprise you which one I think he's going to choose. Yeah, and it looks like... No real combo or much to do about anything in this hand. You got Eternal Witness, a Ranger Captain of Eos, a Noble Hierarch, and a Birds of Paradise. Birds, yeah, Birds of Paradise, excuse me. I mean, this seems like a hand that's just extremely liable to be locked out, locked out by a Lattice next turn. Yeah. Because Karan can, well, I guess with the Noble Hierarch, Karan can use that plus give her runes to attack the Karn down to one. Yep. And then keep him off of a second search the next turn. There's a Relic of Progenitus. We're going to head back over to Riley. Little, little green mana. And now there's the attack. Sorcerer Spyglass stops everything but mana abilities. So The untap ability is cut off, but yes. it still works as a land of war elves. I was about to lose my mind. But we're good. So Karn's down to one. Raleigh's now going to play his Ranger Captain of Eos. Search up a little something, something. He's going to go with, I believe, a Walking Ballista. My eyes do not deceive me. Apologies for the glare at home, folks. Head back over to Franzi. He's got Tron. He's got Karn the Great Creator both in play and in hand. There's a forest. That's a lot of mana. We have a Ballista here from Francais with the ability to follow up next turn with um, Karn plus a Lattice all in the same shot. Giver of Runes has been taken care of. Relic Progenitus will take care of the Giver of Runes for good. I want to take care of that Noble Hierarch, too, while we're here. Now you like to kill those mana creatures, don't you, bud? I mean, if you pin Koran's total resources, if you have a, a line next turn to Karn into Lattice, then the only thing that really matters is keeping Koran's battlefield as manageable as possible this turn. Because everything, everything else is taken care of for the rest of the game. Mm-hmm. Four mana. And Ballista for two. It's going to be tough. Does Karn the Great Creator not stop that? Am I wrong? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah it's going to be tough to do. Now the Hierarch's dead. Before the Exalted Trigger. And now the Karn's dead. So now with the Karn dying, that means the Ballista is back on. And now the Ballista will take care of the Ballista. And the Ballista will shoot the Ballista. Okay, so the battlefield is getting cleared up pretty well here. Now there's the Birds of Paradise. And now we're going back over to Adam Franzi. 
He'll draw a card. He's still got that Relic Progenitus on the battlefield. Still looking at that Karn the Great Creator in hand. No Ugin, no Ulamog, no seven mana Karn just yet. There's Karn the Great Creator. It'll fall down to three, and let's see what he wants to get this time. He's going to go with Worm Coil Engine. That'll do a nice job of defending the Karn. Yeah, not quite ready yet to just uh, Karn in the Lattice. Mm -hmm. Too much presence on the battlefield for Karan to, to make that play. But if you were to go ahead and um, set up shop around the Karn with a Worm Coil Engine, the next turn it might be open to you. And Riley's got some thinking to do now. He's in a tough spot, though he is up a game. So he can comfort himself a little bit with that. That's a noble hierarchy. This is a Birds of Paradise coming in the air, knocking Karn down to two. And the follow-up, as he takes one from the Horizon Canopy, is an Eternal Witness. Witness is going to get back Ballista. And we're going to head back over to Adam. So Adam's going to untap... So it has Karn, the great creator, on the battlefield. He'll draw a card. Don't forget about that relic as well. I think Riley might be thinking about activating Knight Captain. Excuse me, Ranger Captain of Eos. It's not really doing a whole lot on the battlefield. It's, it's easily trumped by Worm Coil Engine, so... Maybe you think this is a high leverage spot to keep Franze off of a spell? It's not a bad time to cash in. Looks like he will cash in. Well, Franzi's draw was a Sylvan Scrying. Uh, he's going to tick up the Karn. Also has a Thragta. So your opponents can cast non-creature spells. Your opponent can't cast non-creature spells this turn, which means he can cast the Thragtusk if he'd like. And it looks like he's willing to oblige. So there is Thragtusk. Franz is going to go up to 24. I wouldn't be surprised to see old Worm Coil get in the red zone here. I mean, the Threat Tusk is about as good on defense as the Worm Coil engine is, so. Man, can't cast that Sylvan Scrying, my friend. Forbidden. That's right. Well, Francie catches his brief little mistake. And he's going to send it back over to Riley. Riley will draw a card. Picked up a copy of Court of Calling. This is a toolbox deck, so it does make you wonder what he can get out of his toolbox after sideboard. What has he brought in? He's got a lot of options. Remember, can't go infinite here. The Sorcerer Spyglass is locking that out. There's a the Vizier. Now there's the cord. So if he can cord for a piece that can break the Sorcerer Spyglass, I think he's got it lined up with the Ballista that's in his hand that we know about from the Eternal Witness the previous turn. Well, I'll disagree. Oh, the Karn. You, still, you, you got go. into the Karn yeah. also. Yeah. I mean, he's getting there. All right, Knight of Autumn. That'll take care of the Sorcerer's Spyglass. Now, he can make an infinite, infinite Ballista. Yeah. I think that's a thing he can do. Yep. Bazillion, bazillion. Uh, he's named 100 billion is his number. We'll get some dice out there in a minute. The relic is going to get cashed in. Franzi will untap and draw. So his creatures, well, I was going to say his creatures can't attack, but actually Worm Coil Engine can if it wants to. But it might be better served being on defense against that a billion, a billion 
walking ballista. Yeah, so that's that touch. Right, Ulabong's not bad. <laughs> I've seen worse draws. Looks like he's going to start with Scrying and probably go get Sanctum of Ugin. If I had to guess. Blast Zone's also an option. Sanctum of Ugin does let him chain, though. Yeah, kind of, the, the reason that I'm interested in, in Blast Zone, I think Sanctum of Ugin is, is the better get here, but I thought there was an argument for Blast Zone because you're going to lock up the ground so tight, especially with the, uh, with the Ulamog. The only thing I'm worried about is the bird being able to wear down the uh, Karn. Mm-hmm. But I still think the Sanctum is just too powerful here. There is the Sanctum. And now here's the Ulamog. Two triggers, one for Sanctum of Ugin, the other one for Ulamog. It's going to eat Ballista and Devoted Druid. Two choices I can get behind. And Riley Coran says, I cannot beat all of this. So he will concede the game. Adam Franzi has tied things up against Riley. And we're going to get ready for a third and final game. But if you're Riley, you've got to be thrilled because you were on the play against a deck that doesn't really do anything until turn number three. Yeah, two clean turns at the minimum. Yep. And Coran almost broke out of that game, too. There was just one lock piece too many, a couple key turns along the way. Winner of this game, the third and final one, will be headed to our top eight later this evening. Should be a good one. There's two decks that uh, maybe people weren't expecting to do well coming into the weekend in Mono Green Tron and Counters Company, but both players doing very well for themselves, 11-2 and two here in Columbus. And even if they lose, if they win the following round, they're probably good for top eight too. So good round for both of these players. We're going to watch it resume here in just a moment. But first, a couple words from our friends over at Ultimate Guard. We are back for game number three of round number 14 between Riley Coran and Adam France. Counters Company and Mono Green Tron squaring off. Riley will be on the play. Adam, of course, on the draw then as Riley is going to send it back. And I think Adam will be doing the same. So both players unhappy with their seven. They'll be looking at seven again because of the London Mulligan and if they like to keep their hands. They'll be keeping six cards. London Mulligan strikes me as a pretty big improvement there, bud. Uh, depends what you're valuing. Good gameplay? Well, consistency is a good and a bad thing, right? Yeah. I, I think the benefit of consistency at, you know, kind of lower levels of play seems very positive to me. Consistency in high-powered formats where games are determined largely by the shape of your opening hand could be downside. That's fair firm yet fair watching the tron deck mulligan down into the same opening every time that to me is that's the cost sure. is that experience now that that means it's bad that's just one thing that's going on among many things but or the dredge deck finding a good opening every single or whatever the thing is you know mm -hmm. both these players are going to keep their six they put cards in the bottom of their deck from the london mulligan Riley Coran's going to start the show here in game number three. It's a Temple Garden untapped into a Noble Hierarch, so a little bit of acceleration. We'll go back over to Francais, who will play an Urza's Power Plant, and a Chromatic Star. To Riley we go. 
He'll draw a card for the turn. This is a Noble Hierarch. That is an attack for two. And that is a Windswept Heath. Back to Francais we go. He's picked up a copy of Karn Liberated to go along with his Karn the Great Creator. He also has a Walking Ballista in hand. He'll start by cracking that Chromatic Star. Looks like Mine and Tower in hand. It's a skill game, folks. There is a Ballista. I think he might want to slow his opponent down a little bit with that one. Depends if he's got another payoff card or not. If he's got the Tron rolled up, he may want to wait until next turn. If he doesn't have a good six or seven, grow it once, shoot down a Hierarch, and then, you know, leverage that whole thing. Well, we know he's got Blast Zone in hand. We also know he's got seven mana and four mana Karn. Seven mana Karn, pardon me, and an Ulamog in hand. So payoffs do not appear to be a problem here for Adam Francais. Actually, no, it is two Karns. So Karn liberated Karn, the great creator. No Ulamog still does have the Blast Zone. And it looks like an Oblivion Stone as well. So it's a pretty darn good hand for the matchup, assuming you have Tron, which we, uh, we know he does. Yeah, Ballista on two into natural Tron and stuff to do is about as good of a hand as you can ask for here. It does seem a little risky that he hasn't blown up a Noble Hierarch yet, which means that Riley's going to actually get to use the mana. I'm a little surprised by that. Now he gets to deploy Collected Company. Knight of Autumn and Giver of Runes are going to join the fray. And Francais is going to take care of a Noble Hierarch now and pass the turn back. So we're going to head back Adam's way. Giver of Runes has Summoning Sickness. Same with Knight of Autumn, and the Noble Ark has already been used. There's the Tower of Power. Nothing all that threatening really going on on Koran's side of the battlefield from Francais' perspective. He's got some stuff, but nothing that really threatens to combo out. And when you add this much uh, power in terms of containing the battlefield in your hand, the only thing you got to really concern yourself with is preventing getting comboed out. I don't even mind Karnin going up this turn. I don't hate the idea of Karnin going up, because I don't think there's any great way for Francais to get comboed out of this one on the following turn. And assuming that's the case, that means that it's going to change the way that Riley Karan has to play the game. Now remember, this has always traditionally been a pretty tough matchup for Counter's Company, because though they're quick, they're not always that quick. Yeah, you, you can combo out, but if, if the game ends up being just a slog on the battlefield, the, the Mono Green Tron deck just has so many haymakers, like cards that are, that, that end, even if you get ahead, end the game. So there's a lot of pressure to combo out, and, uh, you know, now with Ballista as part of the mix, Spatial Contortions and Cyborg, it's not easy to do. Four mana. It's a walking Ballista. Give her runes is going to help take care of Karn. Not in love with the use of that car and taking care of a Knight of Autumn. I feel like it can get a lot more out of that card as there's a Blast Zone. We're going to see Blast Zone be used for one to take care of the Giver of Runes and the Noble Hierarch, leaving Riley with just a Walking Ballista. Yeah, particularly with the Blast Zone in hand, to me it seems like you go up, make Karam make an attack, put pressure on him to get some more stuff on the battlefield, and then the next turn you blast zone away the ones, mm -hmm. and your Karn's ready to exile whatever his best thing is. An Abrupt Decay will take care of the Oblivion Stone. And now we're going to see Karan attack here for one. So Francais, with two payoffs already taken care of, he's got one left. Makes you question the use of these payoffs so far, leaving that Oblivion Stone out there naked to get blown up. He'll go to the sideboard now and take a look because he does have Karn, the great creator, in hand. Expedition map forest and Karn, the great creator, is what's left over. He also has a chromatic sphere that he can blow. So there is the forest. That's the land for the turn. Access to eight mana. Now there's the map.
what comes next for our Tron player is the question. I mean, Looks you like can he'll go towards Karn. I guess you could Karn for bridge. Mm. I don't think you need to Karn for anything. Okay. Yeah. Why can't we? We can just Karn in plus. Sure. That's more than enough. Well, I thought if you win Karn into bridge, you're empty-handed, and next turn you can just Karn into into lattice, and then sure. that's that, right? Although I guess turning your expedition map on this battlefield into a into a creature is not that different from Ensnaring Bridge. The mm -hmm. attacks are so bad, and you get to give uh, Karn a little bit of cushion on loyalty as well. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Uh, the, this looks fine from France. Both these knuckleheads are headed that way. Expedition map is going to block and be sacrificed. So Karn will roll down to five. Wouldn't be surprised if we saw a tower or a Sanctum of Ugin here. Ghost Quarter doesn't strike me as doing very much right now. So I think Franzi might be thinking about the Sanctum, and he'll get that utility land out of his deck. I'm surprised. I almost wanted to just trade off. I don't hate the idea of trading off. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, at that point, it's, you know, then you, then if everything goes according to plan, you have the lock set up, mm -hmm. and against a 1-1, one, one, the Vizier is a lot more presence on the battlefield in terms of maybe being able to get rid of Karn, but I don't know. It's going to be a green and a colorless. Sacrifice the sphere. Draw a card. So there's another sphere and a forest in hand. So just a green mana floating now. Yeah, now Francais is not really in a position to be able to Karn for Lattice because he goes down to three loyalty and then the attackers are there. Whereas if you traded off the map, then... Then you're safe. You, yeah, it's yeah. So, he's so far away from being able to remove it. Yep. He actually can't, he can't keep pace with you just plussing the Karn. Well, he's worked himself into a little bit more trouble than I think he expected to. So now he's looking through the sideboard, deciding what card to get here. And he might be thinking Worm Coil Engine. And he will get the 6-6. Six, six. So he'll play Sanctum of Ugin. And now he will play Worm Coil, because he does have green mana floating. So just a forest left over. Still has his fear to break. We'll go back over to Riley. Warm Coil Engine, I think, represents payoff card number four that Franzi has drawn this game. Yep. That's a lot to slog through. Every single one of the cards requires so much in terms of resources, uh, giving up equity in combat, that, you know, Karan can really only fight this sort of fight for so long. Oh, well, Gavany Township appears to have been the draw for the turn. There's a block there. Township is going to Go active and knock Karn down to just one loyalty. I'm not, Riley putting a lot of emphasis on trying to get that off the battlefield. Well, the problem, I, I'm not sure that I... I so if, if Franzi goes and minuses the Karn and, and gets a Lattice, then that's fine. Then the next turn you can make that attack and you, you get the Karn off the battlefield, you play on. Doing it now just means that Franzi gets to go, okay, plus Karn, and you're back up against it. Yep. You, you, you know, I, I don't think you can do this sort of maintenance incrementally. You have to wait until Franzi makes the move himself and then try to finish off the Karn. Because this way you're just, every creature's a, a really special resource to try to manage this fight. And every time you just throw one into the Worm Coil engine, you're diminishing your ability to fight it over the long term. There's a devoted druid. Pass the turn back. Franzi will draw a card. Franzi's just drawing lands right now. 
if Riley Coran draws a Path to Exile, we're looking at a really different game here, folks. Yeah, I mean, the, 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 Franzi just needs to get to the spot where he can safely play the Karn. He needs a removal spell, an extra blocker, a sweeper, something to lock the game up with Lattice. Mm -hmm. Coran now with the Gavity Township has just enough going on where Franzi knocks the Karn down to one. Uh, Coran can come back and finish off the Karn and play on. Uh, if Coran misses a beat here, or if Franzi finds a removal spell or some other uh, punishing card, he can lock up the game on the spot. Collect a company, a quarter calling. There are some good draws here for Riley Coran. Looks like maybe Eternal Witness. No one looks through their graveyard for fun, do they? I'm gonna organize a little bit of mana here. Let's see what this is. Well, it's a noble hierarch. Blocking the Ballista. Okay. This is Nox. This Nox Karn down to two. Yeah, I, I think... Like uh, the same issue that you just mentioned. Right, yeah. I, I don't like trying to maintain the Karn this way. Yeah. Uh, because Francie's under no obligation to pull, to do anything with the Karn until the battlefield is totally swept up or he can maintain it some other way. There's a Sylvan Scrying. I don't know if he has another land of value to get. He or has a ghost quarter. Ghost quarter is not bad. Mm -hmm. Ghost quarter will take care of the Gavney Township. This will allow Riley to get a land out of his deck. He'll go with a, well, he's thinking basic swamp. Might not be anymore. How about basic forest? <laughs> Karn's going to roll up to three. We're going to be heading back Riley's way, I think, here in just a moment. I don't think Francie will be attacking. I don't think. No. I'd be surprised. There's a path to exile. I think it may have been. I think. The problem is, even if you had a path here, it's like about, about the best thing. Francie's at 29 drawing to just every last yeah, he's, card he's in the deck. His, he's drawing his whole deck. Yeah. But you got you got to you got to take care of what's in front of you. If that was the path, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, you know, I, I'm sure Koran would describe Path to Exile as a good draw. It's yeah. one of the better ones from here, and it, it gets rid of the short-term crisis of the Karn locking up the game alongside the Lattice. But uh, you know, that's still a far way away from being able to actually win the game. All right, it's a Vizier. It was a different white card. Pass the turn back. I mean, that is threatening. Yeah. There are now draws. I mean, if we care about getting Karn off the battlefield, that is threatening. It's another land for Franzi. See, what's, what's, what's interesting about this is this is what Riley needs to have happen to be able to get in this game. Right. Now, what does Franzi have to dig out of the old toolbox here? For whatever it's worth, I'm not a huge fan of, of Franzi leaving the cards back in his hand. One, there's the off chance that you... Cantrip and a cantrip and a cantrip and a cantrip. You get bottlenecked on mana. That, that that's unlikely, but a small argument. Mm -hmm. The bigger thing is, I want to have the option of just getting in Searing Bridge, and he's kind of taking that out of the equation by holding some lands back in his hand. He's going to tick Karn up to four. Pass the turn back. Let's go back over to Riley. Horizon Canopy. Let's draw a card. He'll use Devoted Druid to do it. Actually, Riley has cards that he can draw to oh, win the for game sure. right yeah. now. Yes. He could draw Shall I. He could draw Cord. He actually just has cards to win. I think Franzi just drew another land. <laughs> I didn't even take stock of the fact that Riley has infinite mana right now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Which he does. He's got a ton of draws. Franzi's thinking about what he can search up. Well, you, you know, the, the Lattice is still not safe. He needs one more turn. Because if Karan attacks with everything, he gets the Karn for two, and that would get rid of the Karn. Mm -hmm. If Karan draws nothing, if he has a land or, you know, no way to add to the battlefield, then the next turn is finally safe to go get the Lattice. So I didn't even take into account that Court of Calling, Shall I? Yeah. Those are both, th yeah. those all would have been game over. Path to Exile would have been pretty darn good, too. So, 
Wow, we. I suppose it's not technically safe to go get the lattice next turn because you would Karn gets deck, you go to minus the three, then attack down to one, and then the two attackers could go over the top the next turn, but Francie has a lot of draw steps in. You know, I'm not looking to play all the turns in the world from this spot. No, he's not going to draw Lance forever, right? He's going to draw something eventually that does something. Uh, Vizier, he's thinking about deploying it. He's also thinking about not deploying it. Well, Karan's also picked up an Assassin's Trophy now, so he's covered from the lattice. Oh, really? All right. And Franti's drawn a Chromatic Star. So. Basic Forest. Do you like the use of Trophy there? Maybe we just hold it, right? Probably, uh, it seems like you're playing with fire. Like, yeah. why let it, if the card's up to five, why let him get two shots at just a utility card? Sure. You're not just, all, you're not only playing around Lattice. Break the star. Relic. That's a redraw. Play the Relic. I think we're breaking that Relic. We are. Well, what else we got here? Let's draw another card, Tron Playa. That was a map. And I don't think map has any goodies left to yep. get. That is a dead end from here. So there is the map. Pass the turn back. Cord, shall I? Dust watch recruiter. What do we got here? It looks like something he wants to play, but he's just going to pass the turn back. Sacrifice the map here. Boy, back and forth we go in what has been a weird one in game three of round 14. Franzi's going to get a mine. Not breaking up this Tron. Franzi's saying, can I get all these lands out of my deck? I mean, it's not exactly like Koran's been drawing <laughs> the top end of his range either. Big draw here. Walking Ballista. Wrap it up. Yeah, that'll that'll do just fine. Wrap it up. That'll do just fine. Does he have 26 mana? I, for Lou? I, yeah, nah, he yeah, drew okay. Ballista, and that is going to do it. Adam Franzi is going to win this game and match over Riley Koran. Two games to one. Mono Green Tron finally draws something of consequence over Counter's Company, and for Franzi... He is on to the top eight at 12 and 2 here in Columbus.